find. Remember, Ed's work is not strictly topographical, like a photograph. It is the high-bred version of the essential aesthetic elements that he saw critical in the creation of a composition. He's got this large pressing machine here, the casting machine, other industrial uh, parts and units of um, uh, motors, and he's combined them in an interesting and dynamic way, not unlike the other American regionalists. And remember, Ed for many years wanted to move to New York City. You know, New York City was the center of the art world at that time, which I don't believe it no longer is. Um, and the downtown gallery convinced him to stay in Milwaukee and to continue working in Milwaukee and uh, to glorify and um, uh, make his art as a reaction to the industrial environment. Remember, all of this part of Wisconsin, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Toledo, Buffalo was all a huge industrial belt of America, which later became known as the Rust Belt because all the great industries in that area have simply died. Just a minute. Here is what some of those industrial buildings look like today. The ones that haven't been torn down are essentially abandoned and full of rats. The areas that Ed glorified in his work are now today just in a period of decadence. Here's one of the problems that Ed encountered in the era of renew, urban renewal and development. This bridge and this expressway was designed to go right through the art school where he was the director. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the Department of Transportation ran out of money, but too late to save the school and too late to finish the expressway. This was known for many years as the bridge to nowhere. Just another view of it. Lane closed. How appropriate. <laughs> Here, this is downtown Milwaukee today with its, the new um, Milwaukee Art Museum in the background. This is an extension of another art, of the art museum in Milwaukee that Ed actually uh, participated in its design. I just give you these as some background of what it looks like um, today. Now, in 1939, Ed got a big, important letter, okay? And his letter from the federal government said, you have won the opportunity to paint a mural for the public in a post office in Stoughton, Wisconsin. Now, where is Stoughton? Stoughton is a little town 10 miles outside of Madison. It is today a city of about 5,000 people. And in this building, Ed painted one of his early transition precisionist paintings. Here it is. And what is it called? Airmail delivery. Look at the beauty of that fuselage. This is the modern age come alive. We'll be flying next to the moon. We'll be flying in helicopter automobiles by 1950. It was an optimistic view of the future. And Ed painted it on canvas in his studio this was not WPA charity work, and I don't want to convey the impression to you that it was charity because it was not. When you won a post office competition, it was from doing the following. You did a drawing, you submitted a drawing, an announcement was made for a competition. You did a drawing without your name on the front. On the reverse would be an envelope with your name and mailing address. This image, your drawing, would then be sent to Washington, D.C. or to the large regional post office, which was generally in Chicago, where the art elite of the day 
would judge your work, they would put it up on easels, and they would judge your work and find which one was most suitable for public display. And that included three approved themes. And what were they? The three approved themes from the post office. What were they? Any idea? Karen, what? Industry, okay, Karen. Air, okay. No idea. No idea. Mail. Postal history was approved. Postal history, national history, or regional history. But the images had to be readable to the common man. And there were three forbidden themes. Never, ever, ever to be found in a post office mural or decoration. And what were they? Nudity. Nudity was forbidden. What? War. No. No. Because war... National War glorified the, the, the base of the Republic. What were the other two? Nudity and nudity. Nudity. <laughs> nudity was one. And the others? Socialism. Socialism. Anything that alluded to the red threat. Nothing but communism. No, nothing, no communism. Yes, sir. Well, I don't imagine anything that would glorify an individual president or individual politician. No. To do it. If they were people like Ben Franklin, early founders of the Republic, none of the living people. But if occasionally, you did get an image of President Roosevelt. What was the most forbidden of all the forbidden <laughs> themes, so decadent that it could never be found amongst the 5,000 murals found in post offices in America in this era? No. Abstract art. <laughs> In the regulations, it was strictly forbidden. Ed provided and won the competition, and the $650, which was a lot of money in those days, remember he was only in his mid-20s when he did this to create this mural for Stoughton. I was just there recently because I cleaned and conserved it a number of years ago and went back recently to see how it was doing. On the right side, you have this, um, uh, again, this early interest in his precisionism, but unlike his other uh, works of art, you know, Ed almost never, ever, ever painted the human figure. And here it's populated with the human figure. And then on the extreme left side, we have the actual delivery of a mail being locked up in one of these mail wagons. And there it is, his post office mural. Now, he did post office murals um, in Stoughton, Wisconsin, 1940, Hamilton, Illinois, 1941, and Caledonia, Minnesota in 1942. He did it right before he left for uh, military service and um, uh, completed those three which are still extent today. Um, here's a, a, a curious work of art within the body of Ed's work, totally unlike anything that you see, and it may indeed relate to a personal tragedy in his youth. When he was age seven, he lost his mother. This very monochromatic view in watercolor shows not only a, 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 a burial scene, taking place, the coffin here in the center, the people in um, uh, respect for the dead, but this allusion to this train that's departing in the background with this strong, uh, almost get the feeling of a cold winter um, in uh, this part of the United States. Now I will say this, that those people that have as their profession the digging of graves are particularly challenged in the middle of winter to dig the graves and there are now fortunately heaters that can be placed on the dirt to warm it up so that the graves can be dug so that you don't have to wait until the springtime for the funeral. Remember you got a great climate here in South Carolina. Here's Ed during 
And, and this is the Ed that I remember. This is the Ed that my mother-in-law 